Well, hello everybody. It is Tuesday. This is Chat with Chap and I am your host, Ginger Wade. I'm glad you're here with me today. We're going to be talking about homeschooling through dif- difficult seasons. But first, I'm going to mention my homeschool tip of the day, which is start collecting some things for your por- portfolios now. Uh, some moms start at the beginning of the year, they just grab some papers at the very beginning of the year, throw them in a folder and grab some more as they move on. If you haven't done that, you might want to do that. It, it takes away some of the stress at the end of the year when you're putting one together. Although portfolios really aren't a stressful thing at all anyway, but uh, if you don't want to do all the work at one one time, it might be good to take a few moments one of these days and grab a three ring binder or folder and a few pages. All you need is a few pages in the beginning from about now. Uh, throw them in there and then you'll have them for the end of the year. Okay. So have fun with that. Okay, today's topic uh, is about homeschooling in difficult seasons. Um, it, homeschooling is challenging on the, on the best of days, right? It's a challenging thing to do. It's challenging to um, have, be with your children all the time and be absolutely responsible for what they're learning in their education. Uh, we feel like we're not doing enough, a lot, uh, even on our normal Honky dory, everything is going great. Homeschool seasons, uh, we we feel like we're we're sliding our kids or we're missing something. Uh, this is exacerbated exponentially when life hits, and I'm talking about life. There's so much life that hits all the time, but I'm talking about um, when something happens to your home, like a fire or a flood, or you encounter illness, whether it's in you or a child or a loved one. Or uh, the death of a loved one or a friend. Uh, that these are the hard things of life that come in and make homeschooling and getting um, what you feel like is the responsible amount of homeschooling done it makes it really hard. It makes it really hard because those times are emotionally trying and uh, just just hard. They're just hard times. Um, there's so many things going on. You just don't feel like you can can keep up. Yeah, and homeschool gets kind of chucked on the wayside because there's other things that need to be given attention, and rightfully so. Uh, we sometimes feel like we don't do learning justice at those moments, that our children are, are missing out or falling behind or uh, you can't keep up, so their education is hurting. Uh, so a lot of people think, well, maybe they should just quit. They just can't keep up or... And this season has been so hard. It's been so hard to deal with what's going on emotionally and and uh, it's just hurting my children. So maybe I should just quit homeschooling and put them in a school somewhere. Mamas, dad, dads, all out there who homeschool, th- this is not the case. It is not the case. When, when life hits and things get really difficult, this is exactly when you want to be homeschooling. This is exactly when you want to have your children near you. Uh, you want to to support them. You want to be supported by them. You want to be close. If you are stressed and worried about what is going on in your life or life events, your kids are going to be affected the same way that you are affected. You're affected by those stresses. The kids pick up on it too. Whether they're conscious of it or not, I don't know. But they definitely have the effects of those that stress too. Have, have you ever tried to learn something when you're stressed? Have you ever embarked on something new and you've had to do some learning and you're kind of stressed out about it? Do, does the learning stick in your head very well? It doesn't. And it doesn't for children either. So when they're feeling stress, uh, it's going to be hard for them to learn. Uh, so the question is, is it better to be in a relaxed environment like homeschool where you can set the schedule, you can decide what really needs to be done? Or should you be in that rigid environment where they have to go every day, uh, you know, truancy or whatever? Um, there's no breaks. You have to do this school. You have to keep going. You have to be keep grinding through even though you're having emotional struggles or physical struggles. So your children need that time to process just like you do. Okay, and it's good to process together. So when we're held to those rigid schedules outside of our homes and other learning environments, it doesn't really give, allow for that time. Uh, Slowing the pace is 
probably exactly what your children need and you need in order to deal with this life situation that has been put before you. And homeschooling gives you that freedom. Obviously, you can set your schedule. And I, I mentioned it before, some moms get concerned about their kids being behind. And I've talked about this term behind before. Uh, if you've ever listened to Chat One Chat for, for a long time, you've heard me talk about it before. Mamas, forget the term behind. There is no such thing as behind. Each child is made unique. Each child is given certain gifts and abilities, and they learn at the time they are meant to learn. You can try to force stuff early. You can hold things off till later. But by golly, they learn when they are ready to learn. And I've experienced both sides of that uh, spectrum um, in learning. So there's no such thing as behind. And this is hard for me, too. It's the comparison thing is, is strong and it's hard to overcome. But don't compare yourself. Don't think you're behind. So... Uh, don't compare them with, oh, the public school is at this time, or the local Christian school is at this time, or this other homeschool family over here who's also experiencing life things is going on this, and, and their kids seem fine. You are you. Your situation is you. The personalities in your life, in your home, it's you. It's unique. And do not compare. It's a thief of joy. D said that a long time ago in chat with chat, but it's very true. Comparison is a thief of joy. Okay, so what if your situation will last for months of years? So you're feeling like, okay, well, you know, this is a short-term thing. It's only going to last a few weeks or maybe a month. We'll put everything to the side for a while. It's okay. We'll catch up um, because we're behind. Uh, but what if it's something that's going to be long, ongoing, an ongoing illness? Or even if you have a fire and your house is being rebuilt, that takes months. What do you do in those situations? Well, consider shifting. You can shift your goals a little bit for that time. Believe me, there's no such thing as behind, okay? Or you can seek out other ways to supplement what you do at home. You may be doing these things already. There's plenty of online courses. You're looking at CTC Math or teaching textbooks. There's Easy Peasy Online Homeschool where the classes are online. The children can do the work their own on their own. And mom, you don't have to put as much time into what you're doing. <clears throat> if that works for you in this season, do it. And that works. Maybe it's something you'll want to switch to permanently. Rely on a co-op. If you're not going to a co-op, rely on other uh, teachers or moms to teach classes. Now, it is still homeschool even if you're not homeschooling it because you as the parent are still making the choice. You are still choosing who is going to be the, your child's teacher, and you know what they're going to be teaching. So you are so homeschooling when someone else is teaching your children. And at hard times and, and life circumstance times, which life happens more than it doesn't, right? It's fine, to, you know, this is, this is a valid option. Rely on others. They want to help you. They want to help you. Uh, another thing you can consider is to strip to the basics. And I'm talking, you know, the, the reading, writing, arithmetic. Those are the basics. Your kids need to learn how to read, and they can learn so much from reading. Writing, they need to know how to communicate well. So writing a journal or writing about what they read, whatever it is that you choose to have them write, just have them write a little bit each day. Or And math, keep up with math. And if it's a situation where you can't do a lot, then don't, don't do a lot. Do a little bit at a time. Go at their pace. Reading depending what you choose for them to read, it can cover the history. It can cover the sciences. That'll be part of their reading. It can be part of their writing, their journaling and stuff. So you are actually hitting all those different things if you just pull it back to those three simple ideas. So I was introduced recently to a curriculum called the Robinson Curriculum. I checked it out a little bit. It has those basic principles, reading, writing, math. Uh, and, and I listened to the talk that the gentleman gave, Mr. Robinson, gave about his curriculum, about the way he considers homeschooling should function well. And I agree with a number of things. There's some things I don't agree with. Uh, you can look it up and see, but it may be something in those life circumstances times or even for homeschool in general that you like because of its simplicity. Uh, it also, it's about teaching children to be self-taught, to give them the responsibility to teach themselves. So it's very interesting concepts. 
Uh, I think it's very helpful in some ways. But if you're having a time when you as a mom cannot be heavily involved with what your children are doing, uh, that could be something that you want to check out. So, But mamas, I want you to hear something else. Parents who are responsible for the education of your children. Uh, this is outside of academics. So there is the academics. That was all the academic stuff we talked about. That can be put on the back burner. There's no such thing as behind. They'll catch up quickly. If children don't start, like say, a certain topic, and you hold them off until they're later, but they were ready, they actually go through it quicker. So, so don't worry about the whole behind thing. What else can your children learn from the circumstances that you guys are going through right now? These are the life skills that are so important to learn. They are going to learn how to navigate through these difficult seasons by watching you and what you do and how you respond. Uh, that might feel like pressure to you, but think of it as an opportunity to grow together. If, if maybe you know that you're not handling it well, get in scripture or rely on others to help you. Prayer. Uh, to learn how to go through these hard situations um, maybe in a better way and teach your children that or talk to your children about that. Teach them about going through these difficult times. How do you do that? Um, they're going to see you if you are praying and you are reading your scripture and you're memorizing the word and you're repeating it to yourself out loud. So you remember they're going to see you doing that. And that is going to give them an education that is way more valuable than the math you might have done over the past few weeks, okay? They're gonna see you relying on others for help. They're gonna see that community of Christ coming together to support others in their time of need. And that's gonna teach them so much. It's gonna teach them about serving. It's gonna teach them about compassion, okay? It's gonna teach them how to reach out beyond themselves to help others. And it's also gonna teach them to receive help. Sometimes we don't receive help well, do we? Because we think we have to do it ourselves. We think we have to be independent. People don't want to be bothered. We think this kind of stuff all the time, right? No, it's a good time for you to learn to receive the help of others and give your kids the opportunity to learn how to do that too. So uh, it, this is not going to be your first choice. No one chooses to go through difficult life situations. It's no one's first choice. However... It is invaluable to you and your children to go through these things together. How to navigate through these things is life skills that is absolutely priceless. And it will help them in their adulthood more than academics, most likely. So don't doubt the value of your homeschool mamas. Dads, I keep saying mamas, but I know there's lots of dads who are listening out there too. So... Don't underestimate the value of your homeschool, okay? When, when life hits, don't go, oh man, we can't keep up. Let's put them back in school. Taking breaks, it's going to work out. It's going to work out from the academics, taking breaks from the academics. Trust Jesus. Be different in this. Retrain your brain to think about education and learning in a different way. It's not all about the books. It's not all about learning the academics. There's so much in learning to be a disciple of Jesus that is so important and learning how to work through these difficult times that's going to be so much more valuable to your kids than that. So those, it's those relationships. Remember, realize that those relationships are so important. Your relationship with Jesus and your relationship with your children and others is, is so important. It's, you know, it's the core of, of who we are and, and how we're to live. God de designed us to be in relationship how to function in those relationships is super important. Uh, it's the keystone of home education, actually. Learning to be a disciple of Jesus, learning to have that close relationship with him, close relationship with others. That's the keystone of what we're doing, and everything else is built around it. So take the time to strengthen that through these difficult challenges. It's great for character building. It's great for strengthening faith. And learning to rely on Jesus. Uh, like I said, I know you would never choose it. But it is the times, those hard times, is when your faith has grown. And that you can be a wonderful example to your children. So, remember in all this, you're, you're training your children to follow Christ in all of life, right? The difficult times is all of life. It's part of it. So, 
please be encouraged. Be encouraged that your choice to have your children at home and to home educate them is the best choice. And they are going to learn so much more than, you know, algebra. And they're going to learn so much more than participial phrases and um, whatever science and whatever history. There's other parts in life that are so important to learn. And these difficult times are your opportunity to do that together. So stay the course. I know it's hard. Cry. Cry together. Process through it. Rely on others. And hug your children close. Keep them close during these times. I'm sure they're confused too and sad. And they need to talk to you about it. So don't worry about the academics. It will work out. Okay? So keep on keeping on. Uh, and I pray you all are doing well. We're getting into... The, the winter season, it hasn't been too wintry here, but the winter season, it can get a little crazy in February and March. So we'll be talking about that in upcoming episodes. But be encouraged. You are doing what God has called you to do and what your children need most. So I hope you have a great day. I hope you're enjoying uh, this new year. And uh, I pray for you all. God bless. We'll see you next week. Bye.